In this episode of Roach Reflections, I want to talk about a still water that's quite local to me. I've fished it for over 50 years now. And back in the late spring and early summer, I went and fished it a few times as part of my uh, waggler fishing series, the sort of starting point. And it was a good venue for that. The, uh, the light wasn't too bad. It's reasonably quiet most of the time, not always, because the Lulworth guns aren't far away. And sometimes you get sort of chainsaws and things. And I wasn't too bothered about what I was catching, but I was catching plenty of roach, some rud, the odd skimmers, occasional perch. And the fishing was incredibly easy on the waggler. Once I'd got the fish going, the fish were up in the water quite often. I was catching on the drop. The fish were pretty much towing the bait away, the float away. Uh, good, easy to hit bites. Nothing difficult about it technically. Cast out the waggler, fire a few maggots in, and watch the float, keep a trim on the line. You didn't even have to sink it sometimes. One evening I got them really close in and fished a fairly short pole about four meters to hand with a size 18 hook small float fishing about four foot deep really bagging up with roach as you can see here since then I've hardly visited the place uh, I've been on the river Stour a great deal the Avon a little bit and Froome a little bit and not done much still water fishing but I thought it was time to uh, revisit this water, the stour had been sour, I think, sour and dour. We'd had a load of rain the end of October, real big flood. The river had dropped a great deal and the colour had gone. So it fished really well the start of November for roach, really easy fishing, nothing very big, lots and lots of roach though, loads and loads of them, especially on bread. But as the weeks had gone by, it became tougher and tougher to the point where I could still catch fish, but they're mainly small chub, maybe the odd dace or two. And the weather as well had gone. The weather had become really changeable from cold northerly winds and hard frost to occasional mild days, sometimes strong winds, sometimes quite calm. And this session yesterday, the wind had dropped right away to maybe a force one or two and I decided to visit the, the pond again and took a pint of mixed maggots but knowing the water as I do the, the easy easy come easy go waggler fishing is a thing of a past in midwinter and I'd taken an old pole with me uh, it's an old browning spiral Pro Titanium, I think, one of the green ones, fitted with about number six elastic, which will cope with most things. And I had a rig that was exactly right, with a float taking about half a gram, and the floats dotted right down. As a bulk, I've got about five number eight shot, and beneath that bulk of uh, five number eight shot, I've got some number tens and smaller shot, with a size twenty two barbless. And a real 22, not one of the modern 22s that are more like an 18, tied to 0.08. And it was pretty easy work to plumb up the depth dead right, get it how I wanted, get it nice and comfortable. As it had been quite cold this last week, it had minus five on the Monday morning, this was the Friday, but a, a warm night the night before, and it was about 11 or 12 degrees, which is pretty good for December. I, I expected to catch some fish. I didn't think I was going to blank. And it wasn't very long. I started to get bites on a single red maggot. First roach I got was about three ounces. Not long after I got one just over a pound, which was very nice. And then in dribs and drabs over the next three hours, I caught more roach. Ended up with about 15 with a best of one nine. Another one over a pound at one five. Another one just under a pound, two or three more around about eight to ten ounces and right down to little, little half ounce ones and a few skimmers as well. I wasn't really bothered about the skimmers from two to about four ounces and a, a little perch just to add variety. 
Didn't get any rud, there were one or two topping way out in the middle. But it was the precision of the fishing compared to the summer. In the summer I could feed a fairly wide area, five or six, seven yards across, cast anywhere in that area, fishing quite a way out, up in the water. And like I say, nice tow away bites, dead easy. With a pole float pretty much dotted down, the bites would often barely move it a millimetre, just little chips and taps. It would go under if you waited, but little tiny lifts, little, little almost pulling it under, not quite, almost wondering whether my eyesight was playing tricks. And sure enough, it would there would be a fish there and they, they got hold of it, but they weren't very active underwater. They're barely moving. These fish are just sort of moving a little bit, whereas in the summer it's sort of dashing in and out and going around and grabbing it and trying to beat off their mates. But in this case, they're very much picking it up, feeding confidently. And if I missed a bite, you could look at the maggots and you think, oh, they're untouched. But if you put them in again and, and fished, you wouldn't get a bite. So if you looked at the maggots carefully, you could see they'd just been sort of, just sort of squashed a little bit. And they just lost that. They're not chewed or skinned or anything like that, but they just lost that, how they were, that plumpness or whatever. And uh, so I could feed really tight. I'd, I'd only fed one line, fishing about five meters of pole. And, an interesting afternoon's fishing, not very quiet because there were a couple of gangs of chainsaw people sorting out the rhododendrons back in the woods. So it was, there was a quiet spell right when they had their lunch. Otherwise I could show you lots more video, but the, the sound wasn't good. So I'll, I'll show it you without the sound. So an interesting session makes you think about your roach fishing in the winter, that the precision from a pole is useful. So far in this series I haven't really touched on pole fishing at all and it's something that I've always been aware of going forward that at some point I want to dig the pole gear out properly, use it on the river, on still waters and uh, show you the differences. It's very easy to get used to fishing a rod and reel and thinking it's the be all and end all of roach fishing but there are times when the pole is vastly superior to rod and reel within its range. I won't be fishing super long poles. I won't be wheeled in 16 meters because I don't own one. I think the longest pole I've got is about 12. And quite often with a pole, you can fish quite close in if you're quiet and you get set up nicely. And that precision will show you bites. You, could, you wouldn't even know you're getting on standard rod and reel gear. So on that note, I'm going to uh, leave you till ne next time. So it's goodbye for now.